Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir, madame and monsieur. Welcome to the live Q&A through the magicking of Zoom for our International Science Fiction Short Film Showcase of 2020. Uh, now happening as a godforsaken virtual event, the one silver lining to virtual festivals is that in effect, everybody is in town. Uh, so we have a, a huge arsenal of talent here with us today. Uh, if you all can un unmute your mics and open your cameras, uh, I'll ask you to each introduce yourselves, tell the audience the film that you're here with, and uh, and let them know as well where you're ringing in from. So, uh, who begins? That's the fun thing. We're not all standing <laughs> on, on a stage and there's no visible left to right. Who even starts? Uh, Adam, you want to start? Yes, for sure. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Adam Zimney, and I'm the director of this uh, film you've seen, LG uh, Marvel. And uh, my principal, and I think I froze. You might, you did <laughs> a little bit. It, the sound got a bit Apex 20 for a moment, too, which was <laughs> kind of rad, but yeah. Um, if you want to start again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Technology <laughs> off to a great <laughs> start, yeah. <laughs> okay, so my name is Adam, uh, I'm the director of uh, yeah, past film scene. Uh, the film uh, at my film school here in Munich. So it's the middle of the night in Munich, Germany. Willkommen. Cheers. Adam Zinni, the director of Legia Mare. The title, the title kind of um, like teched out. Like, like, tech. <laughs> like literally as you literally said it, it became this, it, this, it DJ, became this sample. DJ sample. <laughs> <laughs> um, all um, right, Anthony. Uh, I'm uh, Anthony Webb, um, uh, director, writer, director of Carmentis, um, and I'm calling in from Perth, Australia, uh, it's about seven thirty in the morning. Hannah and Addison. Hey, uh, sure, I'll go ahead. I'm Addison. Uh, I'm the writer and producer of Swipe Up Vivian, and I'm in LA, so you know there. Hey, I'm Hannah. I'm the director of Swipe Up Vivian, and right now I am in Chicago. Good to see all of you. Likewise. Marco? Uh, hey, my name is Marco Baldonado. I'm the writer and director of Toto, and I'm calling from Toronto, Canada. All right. Hey. Sofian? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sofian, and I'm the writer-director of uh, Doppelbanger, and I am calling in from Connecticut. Fantastic. Mark? Hello, I'm Mar Martin Jordan, and I'm the director of Your Last Day on Earth. And I'm calling right now from uh, Mexico City because I just arrived today. So I'm here with my wife in Mexico. Just the best, the best moment of my life in quarantine in Mexico, as you can imagine. <laughs> and, Traveling must be intense right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, the best option is not being in the planet Earth. So probably. Uh, only the, the Android curiosity that is in Mars is having much fun, that's more fun than, than us. But uh, yeah, but yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and Colin? Hi, uh, Colin, Colin Levy, director, writer, director of uh, Skywatch. And I'm calling from Los Angeles. Fantastic. Uh, so, to begin, and again, this is the most inorganic way to do these things, so I apologize <laughs> if I schmuck out, because I truly don't know how to break this apart in a cohesive, stagecrafty way. Um, so if you can each go into a little bit about what it was that moved you to tell these particular tales, and maybe even go a little bit into what it took to make these films. So we can try to follow the same order. Uh, Adam, do you want to start? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, it was my diploma film, so um, I knew it will take some time, but uh, I, I wasn't expecting it to take so much time. Um, How long did it take? Pardon me? How much time did it take? Almost four years from, mm. the, from the beginning of the first idea until finishing everything. And uh, well, there are some, some things uh, which were in the beginning why I wanted to shoot this film. Uh, it, everything started with an image. It was the guy running in the most hostile environment I could imagine. And then when, when I started researching, uh, I, I um, read the short story by Edgar Allan Poe called Ly Ligia. Um, 
uh, where the Lady Lagia is uh, capable of um, overcoming natural laws by resurrecting herself just by, by her will. And then I was researching on another project about artificial intelligence. And then uh, it became a eureka moment for me when these two stories collided because suddenly it makes sense that um, a super intelligence, an artificial intelligence uh, is also capable and will be capable of overcoming natural laws and the laws of physics just by learning exp expansionally. Um, so yeah, and the other uh, idea was um, Greek mythology, there was a siren called Lygia and um, you know, sirens were also omniscient uh, creatures and they knew everything and they were um, half human, half something else. So all these images came together and created the story. So this was the starting point. Sorry, it was a very long answer. For, uh, no, that was a great answer. A short question. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony? Um, oh, so this, this story was based on um, adapted from experiences in my own life, even though it's a sci-fi, it was, it's kind of based on a long-term relationship I had and the breakdown of that relationship and kind of emotionally how I felt uh, through, I guess, the grief of that, grief in that relationship. And I tried to make, um, I guess, every physical aspect of the film reflective of that journey someone goes through when they're grieving, whether it's for the loss of a loved one or a relationship or whatever it is, something that is kind of universally identifiable as well as kind of aiming for. Mm. I mean, it really captures a, a very tortured energy. It's powerful. Thank Thanks. Um, Hannah, Addison? Uh, yeah, uh, I think everything I write just comes out of deep and utter despair. So, uh, you know, um, I, I... There are always comedies. There are always <laughs> <purely> despairing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I probably based off like a time where I lived in a studio for two years where I was just like depressed and eating Tortina's pizza rolls by the bucket and, you know, like feeling sad. I wish I could say I was like I, I conceived of the pandemic, but I did not. And we made this a long time ago. But hey, I guess um, I'm awesome. But anyway, um, there are a lot uh, of shorts yeah. that had that kind of pandemic vibe Absolutely. to it. Totally. I, I, I really wish that he could be here with us. The fog really feels like it's speaking to the immediate now. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I also like the idea of a sassy computer and my um, I had a short that I wrote last year that also had a sassy computer and it yep. became kind of a trilogy of just Add like- the end. Add, Add yeah, a yeah. Better now of not just Fantasia, but this exact short film program. Hey, you know, I wish I was in Montreal right now and I'm crying on the inside, so don't worry. Uh, but Hannah, do you want to talk about the making of it and all that, and all that beautiful things? Yeah, I mean, I think what my favorite part is about directing is like really pulling resources together to really establish like the tone and the aesthetic. And I really pulled from like Lost in Translation, but also like European films, like even thinking like Let the Right One In. Um, of that really cold, bleak, you know, nothingness. And it actually, when we were filming, it was pretty snowy in Chicago. So the white sort of blown out windows was natural. I mean, we were shooting huh. on like the 20th floor of a, of a building in Chicago. Um, that's like a building, building. Yeah, a building where fun goes. Literally, it was like the like you walk in and you immediately feel despair and sadness. Yeah. And they're like <laughs> famous. It's it's like the Wilco Towers. If you ever see those like huge like oh, yeah. on the Marina Towers in Chicago. Yeah. What's crazy is those blown out windows really do feel like a stylistic choice. They're totally. Yeah. The I mean, it's, it's fantastic. We were we had had the script for a while and it was fun based on when we wanted to film, I wanted to like lean into our resources, like I said. So like if we were to film in LA, I was thinking like desolate Joshua Tree, like RV. Mm -hmm. But if it was Chicago winter, it's like, okay, like high rise, cool tones. Um, and so it was cool to see it like come into fruition when we had sort of like different ideas of like what it really could look like, but sure. yeah. And I love the two women. Did you write specifically with them in mind or were they happy accidents after your script? Uh, they were not in mind, but then like once Hannah was like, let's shoot in Chicago, I was like, they're better actors from Chicago that I know. 
Uh, and so I was like, I we asked him to audition and all that kind of stuff, but they're all friends. Like the, the Chicago theater community is so insular. So like I, you know, once we like we asked a few people to audition and like they were my friends. So I was like, hey, come, I know this is weird. You audition. So, so for you, me, both but also, you both knew that. You both yeah. knew it before. I didn't know I mean, Emily, but I I know Mary. Um, yeah, I mean the community here is pretty insular, and um, which is nice because when you're directing or sort of building a new team, there is some like familiarity. Which yeah. makes the relationships better and performances better. So, oh, they're they're really measured and controlled. I mean, you, you direct them beautifully. Thank you. You're welcome, um, Marco. So, first of all, I, I love that your star is just several feet away from the camera, and I feel the audience is going to want to see her. Uh, oh. <laughs> if you want to talk a bit about the genesis <laughs> of the of the glorious creation that is Pluto. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Um, uh, yeah, so Toto, um, it's sort of like Big Hero 6 meets Lost in Translation. And uh, another film that inspired it was Mon Encore. Uh, mm. It's a film by Jacques Tati. Yeah. And um, it's pretty much just a, a love story between the old world and the new world. And uh, it, it puts my grandmother, my nonna Rosa Forlano, uh, she's 93 years old. And she meets a, the newest thing in the world, which is this robot. And uh, the film follows their relationship and whether her love can be installed onto the robot, I guess. And her traditions. I mean, do you want to talk- And her traditions, yeah. I mean, what was it the dream to tell this particular story? Um, I mean, the, <laughs> I guess the filmmaker answer was, if I'm gonna go all the way with a debut kind of short film, uh, I'm gonna tell a story that's deeply personal to me. So if it totally explodes, at least like, oh man, it's like, it's my grandmother, right? So it's like a memento. <laughs> uh, it's like a really special thing. And luckily, you know, with a lot of love and a lot of work and all the contributions of the team, it became a fun film. And I'm, I'm glad, you know, people are enjoying it. Yeah, it's it's yeah, very very pleasurable. Uh, Thank Colin. you. So, um, yeah. So uh, uh, I I've spent literally the past almost seven years of my life on this sort of passion project. And you've been doing so uh, many things. That's crazy that you would be able to going back and forth. So you did well, entire that, big projects and kept going back to tinker on this. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't. I had. I, I mean, first off, I was, uh, so I started this while I was working as a layout artist at Pixar Animation Studios up uh, in the Bay Area. And um, it was just sort of a nights and weekends project for the first several years. So I took a leave of absence, um, took a few months off one summer in 2014 to shoot it. So this is literally six years ago we shot this thing. Um, and, um, you know, at the time it was like, it was the first period of my life when I didn't have a short film. I, I've been making shorts for a long time, literally since I was 15. And so when I got to Pixar, it was like such a, you know, a victory for me because I've, I've dreamed of working at Pixar, but then I actually found, found myself kind of lost, like without a passion project, you know, I finished my, my senior film from film school and then I didn't know what to do with myself. So um, Skywatch kind of was born out of uh, a, a frustrations about how little time I had to focus on personal work. Um, and, uh, you know, just wishing that there was, you know, I didn't have to go to the grocery. I didn't have to go do my laundry. Like all my weekends were just, it was my first time really having a regular nine to five that, that kept me, you know, occupied for, it felt like the majority of my life. Um, and so just, I find myself dreaming of drone delivery you know, I wanted that to happen now. And in 2014, it was before, you know, Uber Eats and like, it was before a lot of things Actually, that made, yeah, yeah that, that kind of thing accessible. Um, and it was before Amazon announced this drone delivery thing, which sort of, I think, found its way into the, you know, collective yeah. consciousness. Did that throw you um, a loop when Amazon made that announcement? It did. I mean, actually, the first drafts of the short, though, it was uh, it was going to be a series of underground pneumatic tubes. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I had come around to drones, and then, I mean, I'm sure that Amazon had been working on it for years prior. But you know, it was like, oh man, I hope that we can release this thing before before it's 
science present, you know? Right. Um, yeah. And it still took, you know, so long, but uh, it was designed as, you know, a proof of concept for a larger project. Uh, I've done a lot of other shorts that were a little bit more, you know, self-contained. And this was just designed to be a teaser that introduces a story and a set of characters you care about and kind of promises an adventure. Mm -hmm. um, promises Jude Law, right? <laughs> yes. Jude Law will be in the rest of the movie, I'm assuming. Uh, that would be nice. That would be awesome. <laughs> that was going to be a later question of the Q&A, but how did you get Jude Law into the film? I yelled. I was like, is that Jude Law? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I think every indie director in this panel is probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, I, I yes. presume you just love the concept, but what, what was the story? It? Yeah, I mean, Jude Ju Law. <laughs> the cameo was the last thing that happened on the whole on the whole film. So uh -huh. the short was completely finished, color graded, music, all the visual effects were in there, and we had this hole that was just a storyboard. And um, you know, the hardest part was getting the short to him. Um, but uh, we so we got know, to see the basically the entire film, save for that finale. Absolutely. That makes it, sense. That would give him confidence to go on. Nothing to the imagination. So it was yeah. like, um, I mean, it was unbelievably thrilling that he uh, was down and interested to do it. And um, if you're if you're interested, I made a, a YouTube video that went specifically into how this happened. And uh, for a time, it it performed better on online than the actual film did. This this sort of <laughs> behind the scenes content. <laughs> Uh, but just Google how to get a world famous actor in your short film. I'm um, gonna do that. Movie or something. And uh, yeah, it was, it's quite a, obviously a dream come true. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, I was already, I knew I was gonna program it well before that happened, but still <laughs> it's just one final beat of confidence where it's like. <laughs> I, I do wonder sometimes like, you know, how much does that tip it over the edge, you know? No, the force of execution. Anyone who, who ever loved an 80s Joe Dante film is going to be so <laughs> enamored with this movie. Uh, anyone who hates Amazon as well. Right, yeah, there uh, you Despite go. maybe being dependent. That's a pretty on, wide audience. <laughs> exactly, it's basically the planet, the entire planet Earth. <laughs> no, we all love it too much though too, that's the problem. Well, that's it, we all hate it and we're all dependent on it. Yep. Um, okay, Mark Martinez, your last day on Earth, which broke my fucking heart. I love that movie. Oh, thank you so much for, for your words. <laughs> I'm also broken as a person. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're all broken. Yes. So, uh, would be an artist if. Um, uh, the first time that I wrote that script was for a contest in in an Italian film festival that they were making like a contest of shooting like a for, for, uh, 48 hour short film mm -hmm. in an airport. So I write I write like the the, the, the same script but happening instead in a park. It was in an airport, and the first reference I, reference I got was uh, La Jete, the Chris Ma of Chris Marke. Marke. Yeah. And, and then. Uh, the festival got cancelled this part of the contest, so I rewrite the script because it was like impossible to be able to shot in an in a airport because it, it was extremely expensive. So we shot in a park in Barcelona, like three persons dressed as a fox, like crazy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you have to keep, did you way of, keep bystanders did, away? Because I'd imagine people would just keep coming up and like taking selfies with the fox behind them. And, you know. <laughs> it was like all the extras were, were in the park like trying to enjoy like a peaceful day and we were like you know we're a 50 crisis dressed as a fox oh, so those extras were not extras they were just people who were they were passerby trying to shot to create cinema in the middle of nowhere so sorry what oh sorry i was just saying so those extras weren't extras in the park they were passerby many of yeah, them yeah yeah they were people like either? Yeah, yeah, and it was and like, told them stay here for four and a half hours or five hours because no, you can't leave yeah, now. No, it, was, <laughs> it was like very crazy, but uh, like me dressed as a fox going to a person that I, I unknown person and say, okay, can you stay here with me? And I want to talk to you for a minute and you have to make to make like this with a head like you are understanding what I'm saying. And the people was like, okay, but what is going on? And it's what we don't have time for that. You just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I so I was a a question. You have to go fast, you know, and and yeah, I mean, it was a very peaceful shooting because it, we were like three persons and we were like shooting three days, like very easy stuff because we shot in a in a house of, of our friend and in the park and and yeah, yeah, I mean, it was very like therapeutic because before I was 
I was shooting a movie, like a very, a very bad movie, horror movie, very bad. And for me, it was like trying to meeting me as a, as a director, you know, mm -hmm. like a way of shooting different. So yeah, it was more like a, a therapy for, for, pe for Spanish people, the short <laughs> film. <laughs> Excellent. So Fian, for Doppelbanger? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I guess it all started with just sort of an image for me that was like a, a guy beating up his, you know, robotic double and, and not out of like a, like the world that that was happening in wasn't, was, was more, wasn't like a, a world where robots were out to get us or, um, you know, there was some sort of big conflict happening. It was like this, just the sheer frustration that I, I was feeling being in like a, and now it's funny talking about this here in a zoom call and like, we're in the technological bubble, but like, this was, you know, a year and a half ago starting this project. And it was just like feeling frustrated with being in front of screens and being surrounded by the tech that wasn't, you know, kind of hemming me in and not, not doing, you know, becoming, becoming a slave to it in some ways. So it was a story about that, you know, about this, this breaking moment of uh, someone just like saying it's enough. Um, and then that kind of grew into a bigger idea. Uh, it's sort of actually a series concept but obviously that wasn't gonna be possible. So we just sort of figured out, you know, how to tell a little piece of the story, a little sliver that would just give a taste. I think um, like Colin too, like doing a, you know, a proof of concept for something bigger, but wanting it to stand alone as well. So that's always, you know, finding that balance of making a piece that gives you a little taste of a bigger world, but also tells a full story um, mm. and, you know, and, and do it on a budget. So that's basically how it all came about. I mean, thematically, it feels to me like it, it speaks to a point of, uh, of the, the alter egos that sex workers often have to create for themselves as a protective mechanism uh, for mm -hmm. when they're working or when they're seeing clients. Um, would that be right? I mean, the, the, the sex Definitely. worker is what really makes the film take on a, a potency, I feel. Yeah, yeah. There's a way in which people have, have hack it, you know, and, and use it to their um, use it to their advantage. But the technology itself that's imposed upon everybody is very uniform and, and, and oppressive in a way. So, you know, she's sort of able to hack into the into her double and kind of use it in a different way. And so the, the series concept kind of goes deeper into that and the way that, you know, people are subverting that technology. Yeah. Okay. Um, so some questions, uh, just going down my notes here. Okay, so Anthony, um, on Carmenta, so I was very taken by the ways the film addresses depression and grief and I love that it speaks to the struggle to emerge from these states. I imagine it must've been a very emotional experience to make. Uh, can you go into that a bit? It was, and it was, it was interesting because in the original draft, uh, which we, we, I wrote and we shot, uh, it did, doesn't have a positive ending at all. <laughs> it also <laughs> very, there's actually a small scene after where the film cuts off uh, in the current edit, um, which is basically him dropping to the ground. And that's how I felt when we originally wrote this, this when I originally wrote this film. Um, and it took a long time of, of making the film that helped me process my own grief and everything else that made me realise we needed a positive ending. And it's actually my editor who, who cut the film and showed me a version and went, this is how it should end. Um, did you like that immediately? Or, like, what was your initial reaction to seeing it ending on a... Oh, I hated it initially. I was like, no, I have to be this like, I'm in despair. It needs to be this despair ending. <laughs> and it took me yeah. a while to come around and be like, oh, actually, no, we need to send a positive message for everyone that, you know, it's when you're at your darkest moment, there is a way out of this stuff. And it wasn't until I was coming out of that at the back end that I realized that, that um, yeah, that's the way it really had to end. Um, I was, this, the whole story was still quite fresh to me um, when I was writing it and when we were making it. Um, and there were still developments in that, that previous relationship that I was learning about while we were shooting the film. I remember coming to set one day and, and telling the lead actor, Ben, um, just updates of my relation, my previous relationship that had happened a while, you know, years before, but there were new, there was new information coming out as we were shooting and we're like, it's such an art imitating life, life imitating art kind of situation. Yeah. And hey, the psychic energy remains. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, it was that, I think it was a trick of it was trying to get it, it, a personal story that, that, is open enough that everyone can kind of relate to. So anyone who's had kind of experience with grief or depression or or anything of that in their life, they can relate to that that you know, it's a terrible story. Mm -hmm. Now the scale of the production uh, for this kind of short is very uncommon in West Australian film. 
Uh, do you want to yeah, talk yeah. a bit about what it took to mount that? Um, well, I'd, I'd done a previous film um, called The Fan, which was kind of another relationship drama, but it, it was about a about a a guy who had kind of uh, developed a relationship with a with an animated pedestal fan. It's actually this guy, the guy right behind me. Um, so it was a live action piece where we did a lot of visual effects work to make that work. And that kind of bought us a bit of um, kudos to make this next step into kind of the visual effects world where we had a bit more trust. Um, uh, Cause this was a, so basically in, in Australia we have government funding for short films. So this was a government funded short film. Um, and uh, yeah, it was like, like a week long shoot and then basically three years of post of just trying to get it through and just showing updates and showing updates and showing updates. And it ended up me learning how to use things like Nuke and um, compositing software and stepping up my own game on how I could do the visual effects. I had a really tight team of like mentors and people working on the film with us. Um, but it was a film of like, when do you have the time? You can work on it. If you've got other projects on, no worries. It was just, it was when it can be done kind of thing and just trying to keep the momentum going every, every week. Um, but yeah, all up it took about three years to get the, to get the post-production done. That's incredible. And Adam, on your end, uh, also uh, just a remarkably huge scale film for a short. Um, what did it take to be able to get those resources to be able to put something together on that size? Yes. Uh, well, that's actually the part which uh, took so much time. <laughs> yeah, inevitably. <laughs> um, well, we have in, in Germany, especially in Bavaria, where my uh, university is, there's a, a, a film fund and you can uh, apply for your diploma film for the first time. And so we applied for, for the fund in Bavaria. Then we got luckily another fund from another state in Germany. And then uh, I got some money from uh, the university and even my landlady uh, gave me 2000 euro just to <laughs> finish <laughs> finally the film. So it was really like, <laughs> talking. Has you just, you've been telling her about it for years. It's like, here, complete it. Is it like that? <laughs> <laughs> no she, she's the best landlady you can ever have no uh no she's she was always interested in the project and the film and you know it was we, we tried to find sponsors and um so we had some sponsors we had the funding we had uh part from the film school and then i tried to get some partners just with the project you know, and I hope to, uh, because I knew in, in that for such, um, usually there are not so many science fiction films in Germany, especially as a diploma picture, a diploma yeah. film. So I knew uh, I have, this is a good shot for me because I think I, if I get, uh, if I meet the right people who are willing to do it and who, who wants to take a chance on me and who want to do something different or something uh, new. So, yeah. And uh, so that's how it worked out. So I decided to be a pain in the ass for the next five years. And here we are now. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you did. Uh, Marco, for Toto, um, was your grandmother difficult to direct or was she easy to direct? <laughs> what was it like directing your grandmother? Um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, <laughs> we, we, we practiced uh, a buttload to, to get, get it just right. Um, for the most part, she is just being herself. Um, it wasn't, I, I didn't want to make her um, cues too extravagant and so what we practiced was just simple language and simple beats. And we practiced for a month. Uh, and it became, the crazy thing is that she doesn't speak a lick of English. So I had to speak Italian to her. And while the rest of the film crew didn't understand anything that was going on. So I really want to say thank you to them, the crew that got involved, just to, just to be a part of this crazy project because, um, it was just my grandmother being herself and us following her. And I mean, it was, it was an absolute joy and I, I'm really grateful for, you know, her to be involved. I, I, I've been making like high school videos and, you know, photo projects on my grandmother for ages. And, you know, she just photographs really well. So she's used to it. <laughs> she, yeah, this was just a bigger version of what I always do. You know, <laughs> like uh, I always make these like small indie projects. And then the moment that this like, 
film crew came in, um, Scouts Honor. It was like, whoa, this is a, just a bigger version, I guess, of what uh, Marco was always running around doing. Um, and yeah, cool neat experience. Uh, do you want to show the audience really quickly all, all these, the, the, um, uh, the sauce that you guys have been making this afternoon? The sauce, yeah, okay. And this is just out of so, frame. I feel the audience shouldn't be cheated with that. <laughs> So yeah, the film is an ode to my grandmother's uh, traditions and being Italian, she loves to cook and she loves to, you know, make sure the family's doing well and, you know, get in nice weight on their belly. So during the, like September, we make a uh, tomato sauce. We make a buttload of tomato sauce. Um, I can show you just a small, that's th literally, this is nothing. You should see actually like the garage is filled with tomato sauce jars. And um, yeah, we make our own I tomato mean, like sauce I can meat. wait, like, why don't you just, you know, I don't. Take us to the garage, man. I mean. You wanna go? <laughs> that's oh, yeah, I do. I kinda. <laughs> I would love to see that. Okay, okay, so it's just a bunch of tomatoes right now. Hold up one sec. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, right, all right, so I'll give you, so. For instance, this is what, like, okay, we're going to go there. But this is, like, like images of sauce on the did. wall? So that, that, that's, like, a photo project I did on my, okay. uh, oh, here's my dad. Say, I was going to say, getting into fetishistic territory. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know where my nunna is right now. But, okay, I'll make this as fast as possible. Um, I'm so excited, I'm say, honestly. Uh, so, yeah, the set, the set of the film is the house. So uh -huh. I'm pretty much on the set. Uh, we didn't go to the garage. But oh, I don't know if I'm still here. Yeah, you are. You are. Oh, I can... am. Okay. Wow. Holy macaroni. Um, okay. So I know. Crazy <laughs> bell. Um, so like, here's like some. Tom so we have like crazy Whoa! amount of tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like just crazy amounts of tomatoes. Um, all here, <laughs> and like, yeah. This is what we we, we use to make the sauce. Um. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to show you. I can show you the garden really quick, her masterpiece, uh, very quickly. But uh, she's in her nineties doing this, Let's right? See it. Oh no! Oh no! You no, can't do this, Doss. Oh gosh, I'm Marco, you're that frozen. Garden. Ah! I blame, my, I blame myself. Wait, this is about the best part of the. So I'm very. Something I'm new has really, joined really us. Lucky. Oh, uh, <laughs> this is strange, but okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm super darn lucky. I'm super yeah. darn lucky, and I'm uh, uh, to have this. And that's, I guess, I wanted to showcase a, a tiny bit of that in the film Toto. Just a bunch of these, like, kind of tr traditional quirks that my family uh, partakes in. <laughs> oh, that was really sweet. I appreciate the door. <laughs> Hey, uh, Marco, you look different. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mark, you look different now. <laughs> <laughs> there's two Marks. Yes. There's two Marks. Oh, there's Marco and there's Mark. Oh. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh, okay. What is going on? <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Just the world is me. watching your transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to you live in incredible times. But through the face, through the zoom of my wife, and I will be answered like here, okay? You, do you see me here? Yep. That's great that you can do that. <laughs> I'm glad you're wearing pants. Yes. Well, this so, is a representation of my schizophrenia. Now you have the representation. Right. <laughs> totally. So, so Chris Marker we get, why the fox head? And it's a great fox set. But what led you to that choice? Uh, because, because I have like a, I mean, like, like a, a tradition in my short films that all the short films that I, I made are the, the main character is a person dressed as an animal. So oh, we didn't, okay. You don't use like human faces to, to be in my short films. I mean, not to, not to be like the protagonist of the short film. You know? yeah, I yeah. have made a short film with a rabbit, with a horse, I mean, a person dressed as a rabbit, person dressed as a horse, person dressed as a fox. Now I have shot a, a, a short film of a, of a person dressed as an ape that the main character is my wife, that is the ape. And I made another short film of a person dressed as a tiger. So yeah, I don't like humans. <laughs> that is humans. amazing. Yes. Okay, so we should open up some questions from the audience. 
So okay. to the audience, you have a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. I realize it's the least naturalistic way to do a Q&A for you, but type in your questions. We will see those questions and we will read them out and answer them. First one is in, were any of you inspired by written science fiction? If so, which stories? Hmm. That's a free swim question for anyone who wants to take it. I wasn't, no, <laughs> not really. I mean, it seems they're all coming from very specifically personal places, more so than- oh, you know, right yeah. What'd you, you say, Hannah? So I, I was reading Stranger in a Strange Land, which I oh, yeah. adore and I recommend for everyone. But yeah, I was kind of reading that like after I think we shot the movie, but that's something that's always like that sort of style and how people speak and like the world in which they live is like a huge influence for me. But a lot of sci-fi, but specifically like written text, like that book for sure. Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily re written, but like San Junipero, I think meant so much to me. Because like, I feel like, and this is like, just like, like queer film is like expanding. It's like, like versions of like what can exist as a queer film. And it's a lot of love stories, which I love, but like, I want as a, as a person who loves genre and horror and sci-fi to like expand upon that as well. And to see like, like Charlie Brooker and like do San Junipero, which is like a queer love story set inside like a virtual world. I was like, hell yeah, I want to do that. And so like that for me, like, I think was a big influence writing this and kind of creating this kind of trilogy of sci-fi shorts that have existed within this kind of world. You got two more, huh? Uh, yeah, one's about a guy who fucks a car, which I play the guy. And then the other one uh, played last year, which is about a girl trapped in a virtual world. And then spoiler alert, the world's ended and she's gonna die. Um, but it's funny. So, uh, you know. Um, it is funny. Great, but oh, Zach Moore, the VFX guy. Yeah, I, you know what? We, sh I would love to show everybody everything. <laughs> um, I don't need to be talking more, but I will say that um, I want to give a shout out to Zach Moore. He's done the visual effects for all three of these shorts, and he's the bee's knees. So if you ever need a VFX guy, he is the friendliest, most beautiful person ever. Um, yeah. Cool. So we have a question, as successful sci-fi filmmakers who focus on different pockets of the science fiction worlds and narratives, what do you think the greatest problem of our time is? And if any of you are working on something new to tackle it, thank you. So, what a question. Like, big explanation mark. <laughs> That's actually a good question. Um, so again, free swim is not to anyone in particular, but anyone who wants to jump in and take it. Yeah, I mean, I guess I thought a lot about just our it, this, is, this can lead in a lot of different directions, but just our relationship with with the technology that we're building and, and you know, the, the blowback and the things that can go wrong with it. I mean, AI is like the obvious place to go with that, but so much of it is just, you know, the environment, what we're, what we're suffering from in terms of global warming is, you know, a result of our technology and just, you can start something with good intentions and just go in the wrong direction. So I don't, I don't know. I, I've been thinking a lot about just creating some more conversation and consciousness about the decisions we're making and, and how they affect the future. Yeah, I would agree definitely because for me it's um, over the last months, uh, I had the feeling that we are some kind really detached from nature. Uh, mm. And we had to realize that we are bio biological beings and not technological beings. And we, we can be easily influenced by, by the nature around us. And I think we got detached from it over the last decades, probably. And I think this is an interesting topic to uh, dive into how from, from this moment now on, where, would, where do we gonna, where do we wanna go? the next years, the next decade. So I think this is an interesting time, actually. Also coronavirus, right? I mean... Yes, of course. Right? I mean, it's the... <laughs> no, no. In your face. <laughs> right. that, that, you know, you that. That. It's, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, look at you. You're just a human being and you're just a piece of meat and not something uh, technological. You're not detached from, from nature. You're just a part of it and a small part of it, so. Um, I, I kind of want to talk to this, but steer, tell, let me know if I'm totally on a different tangent. But I think like nowadays, 
there's a there's we fear a lot of things we fear technology so much and like i think there are many opportunities where technology can benefit people and you know benefit our environment as well um so i think like i don't know i, I just want i hope we can make more films that have more of a neutral if not positive outlook on technology and uh, our relationship with it Okay. I, I would oh, say that. Yes. I would say that. I think that for my point of view, from Spain, you know, like it's like a, a bubble, a, a bubble country. But uh, what I think my generation uh, just understand is everything that when I was a kid, I I, I was asked for like in the future you wanna do this, you wanna be able to do that, you wanna be able to have a job, to you know. If you study, if you study hard, you wanna have like a very good life. This now in the in the age that we are living right now, it's not like it doesn't make any sense. I mean, all the things that we thought about the future are like blow up. And I think it's a very interesting because when you see like movies from the middle, uh, for example, the 1960, uh, all the 21th century was focused in achieving like uh, things that are, like going to our planets, like um, you know, like expanding the humankind through the uh, solar system. But I think that right now what we are is like, we don't really know. And we, we I hear right here, like, we don't know which direction we are going to take, like, because we are in a, in a point of like everything that we, everybody, all, all generations explain about us, they are not realistic uh, consequences. We have the coronavirus, all the crises, everything. And we are now like trying to survive. And I think that all the coronavirus is gonna like reformulate the way of uh, how we live, how we la live. I mean, so now I think in a science fiction point of view, we're a very interesting point because it's uh, very, it's it makes sense like a very apocalyptic view of the future, but also makes sense like a, a more like ecological and more, more um, um, green conception of uh, how we are as a human and that we need uh, natural and we have maybe to come back from all this consumism and all, all this technology and maybe we don't need so much to to la to live uh, we also need maybe to to think about more uh, little folk like I don't know how to say it because I, I talk very very bad English but what I'd say is like coming back about uh, globalization maybe is not as good as we thought from the beginning and maybe like the local production, the local cinema, uh, they are like the future, for example. But I don't know. I, I don't I don't really know what I just say, so. <laughs> <laughs> but good, sorry That's for fantastic what answer, yeah. <laughs> okay, so from Sam, loved all the films, exclamation mark. We watch this every year and it might be the best selection yet. That's really cool. Question for the director of Toto. I felt so bad for the robot at the end. Do you think Nana came around to the new update? Um, so at the final moment, uh, you see the battery light of the robot uh, go red. And, uh, you know, I, I want to feel that once it's depleted battery, it's going to start wailing, plug me, plug me in, plug me in. And Nana's going to get so freaking annoyed that she's going to have <laughs> talk to Toto again. So um, yeah, I want to hope that they they do have a better relationship and that her family uh, does show her how to use the device and you know they things turn out for the better. Cool. Um, okay, so we got through those. Um, on a closing note, then, if you each want to go into a little bit about what you plan to do next or what you're currently working on, if you're able to. So yeah, there's no logical, obvious first person to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Adam. Um, well, right now I'm I'm working on it's early stages, but I'm working on three different things, and I think the uh, the one I'm researching the most right now dives actually a little bit into the thing I, I mentioned earlier, uh, being detached from nature, and it's I. I, I it's, gonna be it's gonna be some kind of adventure thriller um in the sailor community so yeah that's where i'm researching right now and writing on the first long feature hopefully good okay anthony um i've just finished the my next draft of um which i would hope to be my first feature 
which is a, a kind of a horror thriller. Um, yeah, set, it's, it's set in the southwest of Australia where I live. Um, and it kind of is about this community of people who live off the grid who are kind of using the local, um, uh, they're fictional animals that live in the woods for their own uh, purposes. Fictional so it has a lot to do with that, that man's uh, command over nature and mm -hmm. how that can backfire and that sort of stuff. But this is this has been a script I've been working on for several years now, and I think we're just coming to the point where we're hoping to be able to get it into production soon. So hopefully next year we'll be um, working on it. Okay. Hannah? Yeah, so um, yeah, I have a few scripts right now that I'm actually kind of working on with Addison. We wrote a feature together called Beards. Um, that's kind of in very early stages, but still working through the drafts. And then I wrote a short film called Soiree. Uh, that's actually about um, kind of a hookup gone wrong where a girl wakes up inside of her own cervix and has this like existential experience uh, with her own body and it's a comedy coming of age story uh talking about female sexuality and whatnot but that is something i'm really excited about and we have some really awesome people involved already so hopefully in the next few months in the next few years we'll be able to um pump that one out oh i hope so that sounds fantastic yeah it should be a blast cheers addison yeah, uh, so pandemics are fun is that they usually shut down when you're in pre-production for a feature. So that's cool. Uh, but we've actually pushed it back to 2028, which we think hopefully will be a good time to shoot. Um, about, uh, sorry to get personal. I broke, I had a mental breakdown last year. Uh, and so I wrote about it and I turned it into a As horror. As you have to. It, it felt like a horror uh, at the time. Uh, which funny, Mark, uh, it's, it's about a guy who's being haunted by a man in a wolf costume. So, uh, I'm, you know, I, I love wolves as, as much as I love your, I love that look for that. And I was like, okay, it can exist and it can be good. So, you know, kind of in line of like Johnny Darko and just about a guy's descent into madness being haunted by a man in a wolf costume. Okay. Uh, Mark? Mark? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. I'm, right now, I'm like uh, trying to. I develop a series uh, with my wife. That she is also a filmmaker about ways of ending with humankind. Like every chapter is a way of destroying humankind. Mm. And we think that with all the coronavirus the stuff, it's a very interesting way of. Each chapter is like how we can destroy all the people. And I mean, it's not very. It's a comedy, right. so not taken very seriously. And also I want to make, to do a space movie, but I don't have budget, so probably I'm gonna try to make a space movie inside, inside everything happening inside the home. So it's gonna be like an astronaut inside the home all the time. Uh -huh. and for the first time, I'm gonna use like a, hu a human face and I'm very nervous for that because I don't know if I'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> to interact with humans, but, but yeah, 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 these are my two main projects and yeah, what I have more, what, what I have more work on right now. I have two short films in post-production. Oh, wow, uh, great. Yes, yes, a very low budget short films like you guys in there. So uh, I, when I went, get trapped in the quarantine, I, I shot two short films. So yeah, maybe maybe I have to close myself like in a little house in a good in order to make movies for the rest <laughs> of my life. Quarantine <laughs> myself to be I will say, the absence of the functional world definitely gives you more time <laughs> to do creative work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a room with a white, white walls is mm -hmm. the best way for me to create like the nothing guess, the nothing. <laughs> The void, but yeah, I'm working in, on that right now. Great, uh, Colin. Uh, yeah, so um, I was really lucky to actually get this project set up as something larger, uh, which um, can't say all that much about. Starring Jude Law, starring Jude Law, right? Jude Law, isn't it? Uh, one day I'll have an answer to that question. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that would be nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm basically I wrote a feature script based on the short and kind of was ready with the feature script to pitch around and shop around. Yeah, uh, kind of begs for it. Yeah, at the same time. So um, fortunately, that that actually um, ended up being fruitful and um, it's being developed for television, actually. Uh, so adapting that feature screenplay into a, a pilot and we'll see. You know, we'll see uh, if it takes. Congratulations, it's fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. All right, and Sofian. 
Um, so I'm working on a couple of different things. I, I kind of come from more of a documentary background. So I have a film uh, that came out last year that was about uh, Afghan and Iraqi interpreters who worked with the U.S. military and uh, were promised visas and stuff. So I've worked on a uh, feature narrative script around that that I'm in a writing lab with right now. Um, and uh, then I'm developing uh, this sci-fi short uh, into a series and uh, we're gonna be pitching it at uh, IFP week here in New York, although actually it's virtual. So it's in the ether will be- It'll, it'll be exactly uh, like this. Yeah, it'll be exactly like this for a week. <laughs> Everything of, looks exactly like uh, this right now. <laughs> yeah, um, so it'll be very exciting. I'll just be um, you know, in, in my room here talking to people and trying to convince them to you know, make this into a series. That's I think you'll enough. have good fortunes with it. I hope so. It's a very so. compelling short. It's, it, yeah, it, it's going to go places. Well, thank you very, very much, everybody. That was fantastic. And uh, sorry that we had to do it like this and not in person because, you know, the apocalypse. But uh, <laughs> right. I'm, but I'm, a taking, a to get to I'm all taking a picture. I'm taking oh, a picture. Oh, go for it. Sure. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Right. I'm so impressed by all, all, all your shorts. I, I yeah, it's, it's quite an honor to be in your company. So thanks for inviting us to the Q&A too. It's really fun to meet everyone. Oh, of course. I mean, thanks yeah. thanks for showing your films with us. <laughs> Real pleasure. All right. And to the audience at home, please cheer in your living rooms or bedrooms, wherever you're watching this incredible group of international talents. Uh, thank you very much for coming, everyone. Have a good morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you're geographically based. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let's all stay in touch. Keep making movies. Absolutely. All right. Take care. See you all. Bye. 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 Bye.